there's something incredibly satisfying about an artist fully committing to a story. Only one of, a K-pop boy group from South Korea, do this like no other and I personally feel this ability of theirs is best represented in their song Dora Mar. Before getting into why though, I have a few disclaimers. First, this is my personal analysis based on my understanding of the song, the choreography and the context around it, which may not fully reflect only one of his own intentions. Second, I'm not well versed in dance, having only dabbled in street dance and contemporary jazz years ago. However, I have experience in general art analysis and that's what I'll be building on. Lastly, I don't doubt other people have noticed this, however, it's never really been publicly discussed in this way and I personally feel it deserves a place. So if you think I missed anything, feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll continue the discussion over there. With that out of the way, I'll break this video up in loosely three-ish parts. First, some general points I want to make to take into account before the analysis, then an analysis of the lyrics, and finally an analysis of what in my opinion is the most important sequence in the Dora Mar choreography. First, as briefly discussed in my other Only One Of essay, Dora Mar is a song from Only One Of's first single album called Unknown Art Pop 2.1, defined by its art pop genre and lack of a music video. In the song, Only One Of sing about farce and the tragedy of love through the relationship between 20th century painter Picasso and photographer and artist Dora Mar. As suggested, their relationship was far from loving, it was a farce, if not downright abusive, Picasso being known to have abused many of the women in his life. Second, something to keep in mind here is that Picasso partially kickstarted the Cubism art movement. While not all of his work of Doromar was fully Cubist, often having surrealist influences, most of his paintings depicting Doromar were still rooted in Cubism. Written by Hill, Jaden Jong, and Napier, the main people behind only one of his conceptual work aside from the members themselves, Doromar is a sensual and mystical song in its sound that is told in the perspective of Picasso, released as a sequel to only one of his earlier songs named Picasso. While Doromar's chorus reads just like a usual love song, Picasso repeating how he just wants to get to know Dora and essentially love her for who she is, the cracks in his words become increasingly obvious when looking at the verses and remaining lyrics of the song. <laughs> These lyrics rather show how he did not actually see Dora as a person or respected her as anything other than his masterpiece, literally saying their relationship might be the worst combination of colors. The lyrics all focus on what Picasso wants, his desires, going as far as to romanticize Mar's tears, gaslighting her with no care for her own wants or desires. Like a true narcissist, he kind of tells on himself. This is interesting to me, because I would argue that making the chorus the only substantially positive part of the song may have been intentional. I'm not here to boldly claim it was an intended feature of the song, despite it definitely enhancing the story the lyrics already tell, but hear me out for a second. A common feat in toxic or abusive relationships is gaslighting in which someone manipulates another person to doubt their own beliefs and reality. This is often done through constant repetition of what the manipulator wants the other to believe. The chorus of Doromar is not only the most repeated part of the song, but also the most catchy. You can essentially interpret it as an attempt by Picasso to make Doromar and the listener catch on to his words and believe that his love and treatment of her is more beautiful and justified than it actually is, overshadowing the rest, more negative parts of the song. While the prequel song Picasso was a love song that showcased a perfect picture of love told through metaphors of painting and nods to Picasso's work, Dora Mar aims to shatter this perfect view of Picasso's love. No matter what people's romantic fantasies about Picasso's love are, considering he is still such a widely celebrated figure despite his abusive treatment towards the women in his life, specifically the women who were depicted in some of his most acclaimed works, when looking into his actual relationship with the former lover and muse, they are nothing more than a broken fantasy. Earlier I mentioned Cubism because I feel that the essence of Cubism can be connected to the Dora Mar choreography, if not the project as a whole. As I don't want to assume this was necessarily intentional, you should again see this connection as an additional aspect that enhances my main argument. 
With that disclaimer aside, cubism isn't really something you often or ever see applied to dance. So how do you connect cubism to the Dormar choreography? In my opinion, it's about stripping cubism down to its essence, which I'd say is the cubist rejection of traditional techniques of perspective, and by extent, the expectation of how an object is meant to be portrayed, in favor of showing multiple perspectives to broaden the context. To put it differently, Cubism aims to showcase an object as it exists by drawing it from various viewpoints, instead of limiting the object to how an artist merely perceives it from a single viewpoint. I'm connecting this to how only one of do that rejection of perspective and expectation through implementing motifs in the choreography and subverting the expectations these motifs bring with them. And I first want to focus on this specific motif. Based on the intimate nature of the move, it's something you might recognize and expect to be passionate, sensual, alluring, focused, loving, or even romantic. A hold of the chin between two people is often a recognizable motif portrayed within that context. However, when you look at only one of implementing this motif, within this traditional perspective, it falls flat, mainly due to Yujang. On surface level, you might doubt his skill, brush it off as him not being able to pull off the mood. However, that's not the case. Yujong can do all those things. He's skilled and easily the most expressive member in the group when it comes to performing. This means his disinterested body language and bored expression is intentional. When I recognized this, it made room for me to wonder why, and realize what they're doing is actually reflecting Dormar and Picasso's relationship. Right before this specific move, Yujong starts the song, describing Dormar and reflecting this description of her in his movements. <laughs> He sings as he turns his finger to represent a tear and drags it down his face. This shows he's taking on the role of Dora Mar. Nine then immediately cuts in singing <laughs> as he draws on Yujong's back. He takes on the role of Picasso. At the same time, the remaining members fade into the background, turning their backs on the stage and pushing the focus onto Nine and Yujong. I guess you could even argue that drawing on his back already foreshadows the fact that Picasso never painted Dora Mar's true face, but was only able to get his hands on a certain part of her. This being the back, that is the most accessible yet standoffish part of the body someone can observe. After this, Nine is fully immersed, alluring gaze, caressing Yujung's chin and leading him through the moves. He makes a point to look at the viewer almost menacingly, showing off his muse, his masterpiece. However, he is completely oblivious to or actively ignores Yujong's disinterest and boredom. Yujong lets himself be led, but does nothing to reciprocate the energy or focus. Rather, he immediately turns away in the same disinterested state when he can. Here, Yujong and Nine perfectly capture the essence of the song. To me, it's a representation of how Picasso never saw Doromar. How Dormar never felt seen by him, never felt represented in his work, which she opened up about long after their relationship had ended. Nine represents how Picasso only used and abused Dora for his art, to show off and pretend what they had was something akin to love. It perfectly shows the farce and tragedy of love in their relationship, as intended going by the song description. The viewers note the unsettled nature. They can see through the facade. Picasso might be singing from his point of view, but the cracks in his words and the representation of that in the choreo are obvious. The viewer notes Picasso's treatment of Dora and acknowledges its tragedy. So yeah, these 15 seconds of choreo perfectly embody the story and the song. And while everything that happens after adds to this narrative, for example, their hand movements in the chorus mimicking an actual painting of Dora Mar, I'm enormous by how they manage to portray it here. In line with cubism, Dora Mar does not represent a singular perspective. It mainly shows Picasso's perspective in words, while the performance emphasizes Dora Mar's own. The audience coming to their own conclusions as they look at both perspectives playing out in front of them. Dora Mar is not just a song with a loosely related concept it tries to follow. It doesn't even rely on a music video to showcase its concept while putting lyrics and performance on the back burner a practice you see all too often in K-pop or media in general. And let me sidetrack for a bit here, I'm not here to say that artists who do that are necessarily bad, it's just their style and I'm all for it, I get it. However, when an artist like Only One Of does go the extra mile to create such a multifaceted story, I personally resonate with it more and I find it important to recognize that. Dora Mar is not only executing its concept, it embodies a tragic tale of love. 
It forces you to confront your presumptions and exposes a broken fantasy. Dora Maar, both through its lyrics and performance, is the conceptual genius of only one of's artistry, a magnum opus, if you will. And the crazy thing is, this isn't where it ends. This analysis was a culmination of things I noticed over a span of two years of constantly revisiting the song. Two years of listening, reading, and watching always noticing new things. I literally had to rewrite this script on a whim as I was working on it because I noticed something new about the song and I wanted to include it. Maybe in a year's time, I have more to say. And I guess the final takeaway here that I'll end this video with is that no matter where only one of R or go in the future, their art, which goes beyond Doromar alone, is complex, detailed, continuously expanding, and above all, timeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah